tuning in and of course uh, thank you very much Joe for letting me follow up um, on your video um, as usual um, about uh, the foreign policy issues that you brought up and uh, many uh, many thanks to my new subscribers and my current ones so we will continue um, a little bit of this discussion um, about foreign policy Joe was talking about a CFR. A CFR, for those of you that don't know, is the Council of uh, Foreign Relations, which is uh, basically, um, these are establishment figures within, mostly within our current government, uh, current government employees, uh, or very recent ones. And um, it is um, composed of the, of the foreign policy um, uh, decision makers and uh, thinkers and think tanks and it is a think tank. Uh, CFR is uh, brings out um, a, uh, a journal which comes out uh, every two months. Um, you can't buy it um, at the local supermarket but um, uh, I do uh, get it every once in a while at my um, either local library. I used to subscribe to it but uh, then cancelled my subscription because uh, simply um, I didn't have the money to just continue this, and um, plus I felt it was probably not um, not worth it because I hear it on the nightly news. I hear these opinions on the nightly news all the time, and so um, you know, in terms of uh, think tanks, of course, there are different perspectives out there, and not uh, all of them are the same. Um, in terms of foreign policy, especially, so you know this. Um, this policy, this um, this journal that they put out, uh, CFR, um, is it's called Foreign Policy or Foreign Affairs. Sorry, Foreign Affairs. So this is what their journal looks like. It's very serious, bipartisan, but um, it essentially it doesn't go beyond um, the box uh, of thinking in terms of foreign policy. Well, there is, a, uh, there is another organization out there uh, called uh, Center for American Progress, and they put out a journal, and it's called Foreign Policy. Foreign Policy. You can look it up on the web uh, at foreignpolicy.com. So they came up with this uh, new report over the weekend, uh, very interesting. And this, of course, was an organization which was um, totally opposed to the Iraq War. Uh, from the very beginning. And um, I'm sure there is some overlap in terms of um, the people who are involved in, in these think tanks. You know, they have experts. I mean, you have to get them from somewhere. And uh, most of these people are uh, uh, former um, administration officials in some capacity, uh, either in the executive branch or in the um, intelligence branches in the military, um, scholars, and so on. And, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that there's got to be some overlap because there's only very few people um, who would have that kind of knowledge. Uh, in any case, you know, I appreciate uh, different uh, perspectives, and uh, this journal is a bit different um, <clears throat> in that it sometimes brings up... Um, uh, the stuff that you simply do not uh, get to hear um, on uh, on the news in terms of <laughs> foreign issues, if you hear about them at all, it's usually sensational in the news anyhow. So, well, anyhow, um, let me just um, read you some paragraphs uh, from this report. Basically, what they're saying is that... Um, Fully 91% um, of us, and these are the experts talking, say the world is becoming a much more dangerous place uh, for Americans and the United States. Um, and 84% uh, of us do not believe the United States is winning the war on terror whatsoever. More than 80% of us of us expect a terrorist attack on the scale of 9-11 within probably the next 10 years. Not within the next year, not within the next two years. Nearly every uh, foreign policy of the United States government, from domestic surveillance activities and the detention of terrorist suspects, 
at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, to U.S. energy policies and efforts in the Middle East process, uh, peace process, that is, uh, was sharply criticized by these experts. The experts were similarly critical of the CIA, uh, CIA's rendition programs, and um, which, of course, you know, renders people uh, uh, subject to torture in foreign prisons. And no effort of the U.S. government was more harshly criticized than the uh, invasion of Iraq. In fact, uh, the conflict appears to be the root cause, the root cause, these experts say, of our current state of national security, and they're quite pessimistic about it. Nearly 92% uh, of this uh, uh, index, uh, this index from the experts, um, says that the war in Iraq um, negatively affects our security as a nation. And 83% of these experts believe that um, Tehran may not be entirely truthful about their nuclear program, um, that it might not be intended entirely for um, uh, domestic uh, energy purposes or consumption, but that it is uh, could be threatening in nature down the line. But none of them, none of them favor, except for 8% of these experts, favor any type of aggressive approach um, with uh, uh, Tehran, uh, with Iran, that is, with the nation of Iran and uh, their current activities. In other words, they are not clamoring for um, uh, another war in the Middle East instigated by our nation. Furthermore, you know, the experts say that 35% um, uh, 35 uh, 35 believe that Arab dictators will be discouraged from reforming. That is, the minority believes that. The minority of these experts believe that uh, current Arab governments are going to institute democratic reforms because of our actions in the Middle East. And the very troubling thing here is that the perfect, it's called the perfect nightmare. A perfect terror storm may be brewing in Pakistan. And um, what they're saying is the country's intelligence services are said to be still cooperating with radical Islamist elements and a President uh, Musharraf uh, its political future seems increasingly imperiled. These developments would not be so worrisome had the experts not also said that Pakistan is the country most likely to transfer nuclear technology to terrorists in the next three to five years. Now, this is not ten years from now. This is three to five years from now. And as you know, um, the current administration has made Pakistan our most important ally. There's, there's much more. It's, it gets much more troubling, actually. And um, what they do have to say is they completely, uh, they completely refute uh, the argument, uh, saying that uh, if we leave Iraq, if we pull out out of uh, Iraq now that the terrorists, the terrorists will follow us home. So um, uh, this whole argument saying basically we have to fight them there so we don't have to fight them here is essentially refuted by these experts. And what they are saying is that uh, our troop withdrawal from Iraq will have absolutely no di direct effect on anything. Um, what they are saying is um, the chaos uh, in the Middle East uh, it has already ensued, and uh, we're not making it any better by staying there. Well, 
this video is going to go on very long, so um, I better quit before it gets uh, up to 10 minutes, my limit here. Um, so I'll follow up um, in, in the next video. Thanks. Bye.